TV sound system, you know what it is, Selector Hype. We're definitely back with another episode of Past, Present and Future. We're talking to some of the legendary sound systems from all around the world. But you know, sir, my thing is based here in the UK. And as an avid UK sound system fan, you know, sir, I had to hit up the real, real, real generals. Emma. Remember to hit that like button. Remember to subscribe. Comment below if you want me to interview various sound systems. Just hit me up. You know exactly what to do. Remember, Sound System Clothing, Uniting Fashion and Music. Also, remember, select a hype. Remember to make sure you check me out on all of those social media outlets. Now, if you cannot tell by the background, <laughs> I'm definitely not in Wolverhampton. <laughs> Trust me on that. We are in one of the most iconic sound system HQs that has been seen by many people them all around the world. The trophies are there. So without any further ado, I can tell you that I am at the legendary King Tubby's HQ. The whole King Tubby's family are up inside the building. We're going to get mad deep right about now. So if you're tuning in, and you haven't got your little ting them ready, your little smoke ready, your drink ready, just press pause, go do your ting, and then come straight back and press play because we are going in depth with King Tubbies. The whole of the massive them are up inside the building right about now. We're not sure if it's the full crew, we're gonna find that out, looking more from this. But as we pan around, would everybody just like to just introduce themselves and tell, them, tell the people them what role you play on the sound? Daddy Fridge, MC. Who don't know? Get to know Natty Harvey, selector for King Tubbies. Silver Fox, selector for Tubbies. Juvenile, selector for Tubbies. Scorpion King, aka Mike Man for King Tubbies. Cesar, manager, owner, everything with Tubbies. Trust me. Well, first of all, Cecil, first of all, I want to say thank you for inviting me down here. Uh, it's an honor. It's a respect. I'm looking around. I'm seeing bare trophies, some old school equipment hanging up around the place right about now. So we're going to reach you go straight, straight from the beginning. King Tubbies, where did the whole saga start for you regarding playing sound system? Well, King Tubbies is a sound started in 1970. Mm -hmm. But before that, I'll have to tell or let the people know. King Tubby is a sound where the English people them love, you know, see it. But before that, I was playing a sound called Drew Creed, mm -hmm. which everyone know that by now. Okay. You know and what what, I mean? for those who don't know, what year were we talking about then? Well, 68, you know what I mean, 69. Mm -hmm. I start my sound in 1970. Okay. And from then on. So prior, just a little bit prior to that. So was the sound system started over here in the UK? Yeah, in the UK. Mm -hmm. And around about them times there, not really going to um, too go into your age and thing, but away from sound system, as a black man growing up in London in the 70s, I mean, like in London right about now, and all over the UK, you know, we've got the the gun crime and the gangs and this and the other. For, for, for a black man you like yourself in the 70s, what was it like back then considering to seeing how it is right now? Well, say 1968, around Drew Creed's son, music is the love of black people in this country you now. Mm -hmm. Because without reggae music, we don't get to meet each other and, you know what I mean, jam together and unite. Blues dance and them little thing there, that's what we go through, you know, see it mm -hmm. with this sound system thing. Okay, so the sound system comes out around about 1970? 1970, my sound. Yes, King Tubbies. Why the name King Tubbies? Out of all the names you could have picked, was there any other names that you was going to go through before you said and landed with the name King Tubbies? Was there any kind of funny names that you had where you says, boy, could I work with that? Or was it just a straight Tubbies? No, well, it's a straight Tubbies, you know, because really... When I start my song, every song in England, name half of a song in Jamaica. Everyone, don't make no man fool you. Mm. So I check and find out and say, oh boy, I go start a song, you know, and re, re, re. Mm -hmm. Our sister come up from Jamaica and I ask her, what is the name of the two song, body song in Jamaica? She said to me, 
there's a song called Tipper Tone mm. and King Tubbies. Okay. So I said, well, then, right. Come on, like a fat boy, and you know, I see Chubby like fridge. <laughs> <laughs> I say I go and call my son King Tobies because mm -hmm. so, I know of the, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you really kind of, you really kind of went down a route of literally listening to what your family member says because even though you did say to her, name me the two baddest sounds, you put your trust in her to make her know that those two sounds were actually bad because she could have thought of, she could have assumed that them two sounds were bad. And then if you find out, so the, the King Tobies are some local. No, well, I, I ask her, and, and being as me come from a little musical family in St. Thomas, we love music, you know, see it. Okay. Me know she not going to put me wrong. All ah, right, so it was a done deal. So there. she gave me two names, mm -hmm. and I choose. So it was Tipper Tone or King Tubbies. Yeah. And that's where the, I mean. That's the story, how the Tubbies the, 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 come The story in. starts from there. Yeah. Okay, so now you got the name. When you had the name, how far, and what was your, what was your plan then? Um, as a sound system, obviously equipment comes into the, in the into the situation. Was there any sound systems at the time in the UK that you was kind of analysing and saying, okay, then I got my name, but who are sound like that sound there? Or it was what sound was out there at that, that particular time where you was looking inspiration from? Well, I had a look at it and say, well, then you see the sound where I live and start my own sound. That man. Oh. Used to have a sound named Neville the Musical Enchanter from Peckham okay. that controlled the most of the Southeast. He used to have Coxon. And because I know that the man that built those sound mm. is one of the greatest builders. So therefore I said, well, I not nah change and follow no man and go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Because I believe in quality. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So therefore I stay with the same technician that built all those sound okay and that is why i have a sound called king tobies okay and, and and back then when we're talking about equipment i mean like you see how technologies move now it's all laptops and controllers and uh, you know uh active boxes and all these things how did you start off what did you start off in first what was the what, what was the main thing that you wanted to sound right but what was it what was that kind of like key piece of equipment where you said yo that's what i need to to, to really make Tubbies be the sound that you want it to be? Well, I always believe in quality, as I said to you before. Mm. And uh, King Tubby's sound is a sound. I don't believe in this heavy sound. So, therefore, I start off with two fin speaker, 18-inch, mm -hmm. and Tanai speaker plate, top and mid-range. Okay. You know what I mean? Start the sound. Mm -hmm. And at that time, again, was it just you one at this particular time? Was there anybody else um, helping out or part of the team? Or was it, was you a solo act at that time? No, well, really, a very good question that you ask. Because, because um, King Toby's sound start off with me and my cousin them start the sound, you know what I mean? Mm. But, um... They didn't have the perseverance that I have because I was coming from a sound called Juke Creed and then they'd have a little thing and you know what I mean? It wasn't really a sound as such, but mm -hmm. it was plain. Mm -hmm. So I said that me have the pe perseverance regarding the sound and me love music from day one. Me don't really worry about the money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So me just decide to say, well, then me buy tune and you know what I mean? Build me little amplifier them and make it go on okay. and play. Yeah. And music wise, what was what was the intention of Tubby's? Was it a dub sound in terms of like dub music or was it a party sound, lovers rock kind of sound? What what was the the kind of like main overall play of like if, if people was listening back to Tubby's then they would say Tubby's was known for what particular was there a particular style that you would be playing? No, well Tubby's that's how we play brand new music, you know. We don't really play the dub thing or such. A lot of people talk about dub, mm. especially the younger generation. We used to play something called soft wax, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Can you explain to in, the people them like in soft wax? Actually, soft wax is a thing where you get it all three, four months before any man else have it, you know, see it? Mm. A man have a song and him decide to push it out. 
And if him know him, we'll give it to you. Hey, the great Bob Marley and all them man there. We'll give you them song for play before it actually release in the street. Okay. So, sound system, that's where we all start from. Mm. And at that time then, how hard was it to get those soft wax? I mean, like, again, we're, going, we're trying to, for the younger people that are listening now, we can buy a dub plate for quick time by email. How hard is it, was it them to get them songs there that were like literally two or three months before the street? No, well, it's not everybody really give them song out, you know, because even right now today, I still have friends who send me music and I youth them and play my song. I say, well, then don't bother play them song and I'll give it to nobody. Mm. Them give it to me upon like a little thing and me play, play it. And me not really want a man else to play it. Okay. Because them give it to me, say, don't give it mm. to anyone and say, go and play this for me. Okay. So, there's a lot to go through. Big shout out, reach out to everybody who's logging in. The rest of the team are here. Like we said, it's past, present and future. And when we're talking about the past, boy, the history's a lot, man. So, we're going to go from 1970. You've got the name. Sound system's firing. Everything's looking good right now. The tunnel is them a lick. When, how long was it from 1970 before King Tobbies was really recognized as a sound and a force to be reckoned with? Yeah, King Tobbies, that's only reckoned in, reckon from about 70, all right, say 78. Mm-hmm. One night was playing at um, Fulham Town Hall one Friday night. And I forgive him, my partner within Drew Creed, Lady Coxon. Glenn, Castro Brown, Junior Boot, and them man, they said, Tubbies are going to bad on the road, you know. <laughs> and them decide to carry me a roaring 20s. Okay. So after that, I said, well, then, all right. Them boys said, no, sis, you can't go down there, you're mad, man. I said, we are talking about, we are going, man. Them said, we can't have no tune for play Monks, Cox, and them man, they call them man, they, I said, no worry about that. We are going down there. Because he's a man who gets music every week, you know. Mm. And you saw that thing near a year for it. Okay. Enough man, I know so my uncle wife, brother, used to run Federal Recording Company. And I get my two them Chris, as them press, test press. Okay. I never have no name for them. So a man can't stop me. Mm-hmm. Them said to me, no, you can't go. I said, no, you have to have me. I said, come. The call I youth name, because we used to have two brothers, Junior Gray and Trevor Gray. I'm going to say, straight come at me. I'm going to go. I said to them, say, Mr. Lady, I'm not really on a van for care go out to it. I said, no, man, we carry you, man. I help you carry thing them. I said, all right. I said, straight come at me, go down my house. Because I had two boxes of 45 there, and 25 in each box. He can't stop me. Coxon can't stop me. He mm-hmm. will stop me. Sound quality, but musically, him can't stop me. Yeah. Me know that. Mm-hmm. When we go down there, we start play. Him say, boy, says so you're brave, you know. Him say, where do you man? Me not ramp with this thing, you know. We start play. The whole of him start check string. I say, what man? Him have tune. Say, yeah man, man, somebody tune. We start play. You see, at the end of the night. Lady come come off I see it and say you are gonna want nice sound for them counteract with. Got Birmingham play all quick as city juke Neville and the whole of the man. Mm-hmm. Now little sound now come come turn me over with that you. you know? That was literally gonna be my next question. Was that all around about the same time? So around about seventy eight when you get you kinda got that bus, that's when okay now you're starting to travel and go into the Midlands, Manchester, etc. Et Everywhere me go go play, man. Mm-hmm. Quaker City, Duke Never, me not talk na young son car, Christopher, all them man there, Wolverhampton, mm-hmm. Manchester, Kaz, all them places. Valerie, them is a doogie them from V Rocket. Mm-hmm. Me play amongst all of them son. Eh. Mm-hmm. They might turn me over with a heavy sound. But musically, we had a danger for the whole of them. Okay, then. And, and at that time then, during that time, was it frustrating knowing that you had the music, 
but you literally like you are being honest to say that boy them they, they kind of hit you hard on the sound system thing um was that something that kind of bothered you and, and and what did you do to try and rectify that or did you just continue with just clapping with new tune and just kind of like happy with your sound no well you see when you talk about that now you see king toby told me he's a man or really true me's a working man me last start to lose certain little contact with certain things you know see mm. but away from the little work me's a man Friday, Saturday, and Sunday till about 11, 12 o'clock at night. Yeah. After that, Monday, man, I have gone to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I leave my work for no sound because <laughs> if my pitney them cry, I don't want to say, the sound never play with no food. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk, man. So, 78. So, we're going to go to the 80s now. A very big era for sound systems inside the UK. Um, you're on the map now. You're going around the UK, like we says, from from Birmingham, Wolverhampton, Manchester, Nottingham, all those places. Who else from London was on the level who you thought was on the same level as you or was doing that little bit better? Well, there's a very good point that you bring up, you know, because you're a whole heap of man at talk, you know. You have a son, Shaka. Shaka used to play a song called Freddie Cole verse. Me used to play a song called Drew Creed. And the whole away we get. We end up in a Brownie Road Catford and the whole away we play a song. Everybody I enjoy themselves. And uh, I used to run a club in a stockwell called Swan. Okay. Every Sunday, you don't need two songs. You only need one. You used to have the queue from the train station, the tube station for mm. coming at the club, a Stockwell pub. I had to go on with that for years, mm -hmm. run it, Shaka now, bring in Shaka now and then with me and so forth. Because Shaka is a bridge, you know, I know, although his type of music and my type is too, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we used to play every Thursday. I just want to move on from the Sunday, so every Thursday. So I bring in Shaka with me and say, Shaka, to whoever start bounces, boom, boom, boom. I just go and work it, you know, see it. Mm -hmm. So Shaka is one of the sound where I used to contend with over the years. Yeah. Coxon was in the 20s and don't really like come out. TWG and them, man, if you come as Swan, you have to bring your sound. Yeah, all the man I talk about sound, but I don't really watch that. Because right now when I see a go on, like some man come with them record and want to come tell us to them a play. I don't know that. Mm. But although I still allow certain things to go on, you know, see it. But right now, my time, mm -hmm. you have to have your sound. Okay. If you don't have a sound, you is not a sound. So who were the sounds? So we said Shaka is one. Are we saying Coxon is one? Are we putting the Coxon in there? I heard you mention his name. He's Shaka is one. Mm -hmm. Neville the Musical Enchanter was one. Yeah. You used to have a sound just around the corner, says, from where you interview me, and now Drew Clee. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm trying to remember the name of a sound over Lou Sham. It was a very good sound. But I don't know every time you talk to anyone, them don't mention that man. Juke Rye. Okay. Very good sound. Cause when I was playing Juke Reed sound, we used to string up in um, Greenwich Town Hall where you have to put all the boxes on the stage and play and you have to see which one of the sound can push through the crowd. Mm -hmm. And it was full. Very big. Juke mm -hmm. Reed sound was a mellow sound. Okay. Crystal sound. Yeah. But never the musical enchanter was the heavy sound amongst all of us. Mm -hmm. Again, Joe Creed played the most tune. But never the musical enchanter is the heavy sound. Okay. So we, man, we're gonna we, we're in the eighties now. Things is fine. I can't believe you had a club, man. That's a totally different conversation we could go down. Car, we're, we're lacking venues right now. So for a sound man back in them days to have his own club as well, 
That's a big deal, man. So what was the energy and what was the vibes like in the club and even in, in, in other clubs around that time in the 80s, especially down here in London? You see, really, if you go a Coxie, you hear a different set of music. Mm. If you go a Duke, you hear a different set of music. You go a Neville, you hear a different set of music. Duke Lee, different set of music. You have to play it to please the crowd that is actually following your sound. You don't, and you want to be yourself. The tone where you want for your sound. Some man want to play heavy. Some want to play mellow and clear and that. Mm -hmm. King Tobis. Well, mellow and clear. I mean, they everything. Okay. But in, and then in the 80s then, obviously they got all these sounds going on with things. The music is starting to change now. It's more like a dance or thing now. How did you adapt with the new trend that was happening, especially towards the latter part of the 80s? Kind of, let's, let's go to say 87, 88 before we, we touch into the 90s. Yeah, well, if you notice, the crowd that I have around me is, me is the oldest man I say now. <laughs> but although I'm the owner still, you know what I mean? But I tend to adapt and have youngsters around me that have certain discipline. Mm -hmm. Now the music thing, even before you come here, we were talking and I showed them say, certain things me not really in. You know? mm -hmm. But you know what I mean? I go along with it just to make them be comfortable. Yeah. I give them three quarter and me take a quarter. Okay. So them know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't give it to them all, you know what I mean? And who, who was playing Tubbies then? So we're talking about late 80s, say 88, 89. Who, um, who was, who was, who was uh, MCing, uh, selector, etc. for Tubbies at that time? Boy, Tubbies have so much man, you know what I mean? Mm. But when I ma me and man will come, come make me a man for this sauna. I used to have Chalice and Strokey them on the sound. Mm -hmm. Chalice bring in Scrapper and that, you know what I mean? Chalice get fed up and go. Because you know Chalice is not a stable man, him up and down. He's my brethren still, you know, see it. Because enough time him come and we sit down and reason. Mm -hmm. And him, it, we come to agree and disagree. Yeah. But when I, youngest man, come around the sound and leave, recently is scrapper yeah right as a selector mike man or not mm -hmm. you know what i mean but it look like them leave with a little attitude and okay. you know see me not watch that mm -hmm. we're going to fast forward that little bit there and, and, and <laughs> talk about scrapper because he was one of the one of the main people them when i started to play sound he was definitely for me kind of helped with bucky as well spear fronting what tobbies was about because his energy was crazy we're going to get to that still because a question that I'm going to ask now, we're going to go into, kind of like into the 90s. This is when I started to play sound yeah. and I'm hearing about King Tubbies and so forth. But where I was from Wolverhampton and as a youth growing up and listening to sounds, obviously I'm, I'm around everything in the West Midlands. So the Love Injections, Gemini Dance, all those sounds that we know about. But every time it always come up to a London situation, I'm only hearing three sounds. Saxon, Coxon, King Tubbies. Saxon, Coxon, King Tubbies. Constantly. And there was always the debate, yo, especially from where I'm from, growing up, boy, Tubbies this, but yeah, but Coxon this. Yeah, but Saxon did this. And it's been kind of like going around and around and around for a while still. If we do talk about the top sounds um, in London, they're going to say Saxon, Coxon, Tubbies. My question to you is, even though that's all going around, what makes you know for a fact that Tubbies is on top of Saxon and Coxon? What made you stand out 10 times more than them? No, you see, King Tubbies sound from 1970 with consistent. Mm -hmm. Consistency is one of the greatest things. Because I don't watch Clash and dance hall. Me play a wedding, funeral, all these little thing, birthday party and them little thing there. Mm -hmm. I can adjust myself or adjust my sound to the crew that actually follow me. If I say, well then listen, we're going out, go play. It's a birthday party or it's a christening or it's a wedding, mm -hmm. it's a clash. We are ready for it. Mm -hmm. Don't think so, we'll just sit down and just 
You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so you would say that you was a lot more consistent because I think what the kind of like the way how I seen things was they knew Coxon because Lady Coxon obviously was the producer doing some crazy songs at that time there or the Louisa Marks, et etc. et cetera. Then you had Saxon who just seemed to have beer dub plate like water. And then there was Tubbies who, I think everybody, I agreed with kind of like what you're saying. Everybody was saying Tubbies is the most consistent. So would you say that then that is the best thing to do if you're a sound system is to be consistent rather than try and be a producer or concentrate on beer dub plates? Do you think that's what you had over, over the two sounds is consistency? Well, one, I'm never intending to put out no 45. Mm -hmm. Because when you start put out music, it's a problem with your sound. To me, mm -hmm. and as a sound system, as Cox and the man, Lyde himself was a great sound. Mm -hmm. Because the two of us come from Drew Creed. With Saxon sound now, we're not really this. No, man, but some man thinks, so well, then he just run off him out and thinks, so well, then that is the thing. We have never really played. We used to play one and two little things at a place called Melon Road in Peckham. Mm -hmm. One at the time, all I DJ them pan Tubby's son leave and go on a cock Saxon. Okay. So I, the few man that I have leave, when them decide to say, well, then, we can't play sax. I said, I go out there to play sax, you know. Because, what? The DJ, them, I mean, directly ask for certain tune where. For burn them belly, man. Mm -hmm. I never have the DJ, but I have the music. Yeah. You can't, me is a man, not a man where you can shout down, you know. Mm -hmm. I look at you and laugh and walk away. Because when I come back, I come back wicked. Mm -hmm. Me play music for hurt your feelings. <laughs> I believe in a playing dub for hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. Say certain things in my music when who oh, who know know who don't know don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's why King Toby is one of the greatest son of this country right yeah. now. And most consistent. I can't play any rude music, any bad man music, you know. Mm -hmm. But some of them when them come, I said them boy said, No, I don't want it play. Mm -hmm. Until the occasion is right. I mean, sure know say more people know me in Jamaica more than them. If they don't know me, they know my family. Mm. So consistency is what's kept Tubby's yeah, so yeah. relevant right up until, yeah. like we've literally gone into 2020 right now. So the 90s is, is kicking in right now. I feel like I'm a hot DJ, hot selector, sound man. The winner takes all trophies are starting to come in. And all I'm seeing is King Tubby's. One thing I have to say about Tubby's is your fan base is unbelievably crazy. When Tubby's rolled out for those clashes when they came, it was like a movie. Um, how was preparation when that cold era came in? Because there was that era where it was all about the winner takes all. We've seen the other sounds come true. It was the willpowers, the classics, uh, the jam and them, um, etc., etc. Um, how did you adjust to that now? Because it was more of a dub plate, hardcore sound clash thing. Um, how did you feel when you was going into those compositions? Because like I said, your fan base was absolutely immense. Um, so how confident were you when you was going into each of these, these clashes? You see, being as me come from 68, 69, Bill Moon sound 70. I'm going to use a word. And I'm serious. All of the sound them when we hear in England are talk about clash. Them not have no sense. Because the reason why I say that, when you go to clash, you want to hear tune you never hear before. Mm. You talk about the clash with value them. The amount of dub when we play this song. None of them little sound they never play. And me still lose, which I accept it because it was new to them, months after they are playing them. Mm -hmm. The promoter said to me, said, Tobbies, the amount of tune when we hear play them, no man we never know them tune. Some we hear of and some we don't know. Yeah. England sound a play 
tune right now. The whole of them are play the same thing. Me know you know that. Mm -hmm. Even with my crew, yeah, so them I said to Mr. Wellen with a player. No. Clash is clash. When you play a tune, you play a tune where man don't have. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have it, you're going to have it six months or three months down the line. No, no, like a joke thing, you know. Yeah. I, I, and this is why I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start to bring in the next brother. Because I'm going to agree with you to a point. Because that time there, man was playing sounds still. And there were songs that I heard Toby's play, which I know sounds did have. But what made it so special about Toby's was, and I have to give him his rating, it's the way how Scrapper would deliver songs to the people them. And I think one key thing is a man can have songs, you know, and he'll have them and don't know how to play them. And then when a man like Scrapper comes out and plays it, the man's like, oh, man, I got that song, you know. And then they'll tell everybody tomorrow, you know, so me have that song there, you know. But you just didn't have a, 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 an MC talented enough with enough energy to go and, and spear it to the forefront. How, um, how did Scrapper... How do you feel he did on the sound? Because I, I have a lot of respect for him and one of the days I'm going to try and get an interview with him and Ting. But I mean, like, how important do you think he was in that, that whole Tubby's era, especially in that whole clash part of, of, of the scenario? Likewise with Bucky as well, because he played, I think, also played a big part. Let me explain something to you. I'm not going to call no sound name. When King Tubby's was alive, some man leave England and go to Jamaica and say to Tobies, boy, Tobies have a whole heap of tune in him. I have enough tune in him. But him not play them. Tobies said to them, say, how you hear the tune them if him don't play them? Mm. I hear that. How you hear them? Them don't come to my garage. Mm. Them go, don't come to my house. How you hear the tune and finish so we have a whole heap of tune. Yeah. So what were you trying to say? Mm -hmm. How you hear the tune come in and sit down and you know what I mean, play yeah. a song so that you can hear it. Mm -hmm. You have some good song but you have no selector. Yeah. It's just what you're trying to say to yeah, Scrapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see a whole heap of man we talk. Enough of them was here, you know. Mm -hmm. And they left. You know why? Because they want to have them one way. Mm -hmm. You can't have your one way with me. Okay. You're so that you're the line. The <laughs> <situation>. <laughs> <laughs> is it your way or the highway? Yeah. Do you, uh, do, okay, then, so, which, which is a valid point because obviously the man who owns and spear fronts the whole thing does have the final say. Um, when they decided to. Um, I know, shall I reach out to everybody who's tuned right about now? Obviously, it's King Tubby's, man. If you expected his phone not to ring, I mean, come on. <laughs> Bookies are coming in right now, trust me. So, everything is definitely good, you know. So, the true big man still, you know, if it was one of them, <laughs> you yeah, know, young son, and I'd be like, yo, fam, what are you doing? Yo, lock off that phone. <laughs> nah. But, but real that, big man thing right now. So, everything, yeah. is, everything is good. Um, what was I going to say now? I totally forgot what I was going to say. Um, yeah, I the time... Saying. The time when you, like you said, um, it is your sound. You do have the final say. Obviously, man and man, and they're, own, they're in their own self. They, they, you know what I mean? They have their own plans, they have their own visions. You can't, you can't knock a man to have that. When they did go, how disappointed was you when they um, decided to leave and go, go their way? How, how, how did you feel um, at, that, at that time? Yeah, well, big and proud. You know, see, when Scrapper them leave, if it's that sort of crew you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I never feel no way. Because mm -hmm. them never take none of my tune. And none of my thing wasn't theirs. So I wish them all the best. Mm -hmm. I don't business what they want to do. I don't have no grudge. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they have any. But they never done me anything wrong. If you want to move, you come into my zone and with me and my things. And you leave. And leave me and my things. Good mm -hmm. luck to you, father. Okay. It's the same way I leave Drew Creed sound. I never take none of Reed June. Yeah. And Reed always respect me with pass on the road and we talk and we reason. Mm -hmm. Good luck to you. Okay. So we are here, Tubby's HQ. A lot of trophies around right now. Can you, um, 
we might have to do a little separate little thing away from that and we're gonna have a, like a comment we might do a little no, a, a separate because there's so many <laughs> trophies here you know what i mean that's going to take up a lot of time right about now but it's, but um without looking behind you or looking behind you what's your favorite trophy what's the trophy that if the if the, if somebody says yo you have to lose all these trophies but you have to keep one which would be the trophy that you you you'd, you'd actually hang on to and say yeah this one has stuck with me no, no, well, I have some great trophies up there, mm, as you can see, and I'll quite clearly. Um, I have a trophy for me and scrap of them and we'll go to Germany and we'll win. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to knock him still, you know, see it. And I'm listening to we and we play a tune and... Because when we go to Germany and all them places, eh, enough sound never used to go there. And if you go there and win all a trophy, with it's some of the German yeah, sound them we can't. The they don't speak English or anything like that. So I said, well, then that one is one of the greatest trophy yeah. I, I would never let go of. Mm -hmm. And again, I will say it. Scrapper was a selector on the sound. The mic man. Me and the OG man, I tell him what song for play. And him a play where he want to play. I put him to say, well, then play that one. We'd go with that one. Mm -hmm. And we go through. How important are trophies to you now? Is that something that is, I mean, do you want more? I mean, uh, there's not barely any space still. You might have to get an extension. But <laughs> is, it, is trophy something that you still say, yeah, I want another one on the shelf. I want another one on the shelf. Because, you know, the sound system thing is very addictive. It's, it's one of them things that you always want to win. But um, how important is it to, to, to be racking up those trophies like he was previously? No, well, the trophy is not really the problem. You see, with me personally, if I win something, whether you give me a trophy, yes or no. Mm. But I don't like when you deny me of my winnings. Yeah. The trophy is not the problem. Mm -hmm. Because the word is dear, so well then, him win that, you know. Mm -hmm. If I don't have nothing to show, Within myself, I know, so I win it. Yeah. So it's all about just knowing in, in yourself and the, for the people them to know that, yeah, definitely hands down. The credit where credit's due, basically. That's right. That's what we're talking about yeah. right now, trust me. And, wow, there's, there's so many, man. I'm seeing some around here. Some of, some of the events is them. I was there. As, as somebody in the crowd looking and saying, yeah, man, one day, man. So, yeah, man, um, we, we are literally in King Toby's HQ right about now. We are with Father Cecil right about now. It's a, it's a movement right about now. I'm telling you, trust me, big shout out, reaching out to everybody who has been logging on. We're going to, like, literally, kind of like to the present. Because, you know, we've got the rest of the team. So I think we're going to have to do this in two parts. We're going to just finish off your part with just what's happening at the present right now. Yeah. With King Toby's. Are you happy with everything that is going on? Team King Tubbies, the way how the sound's playing, the way how the sound's sounding. And if you're not happy, what are the negative things about King Tubbies right about now, which you are going to fastly turn into a positive thing? No, well, right now, when it comes to the sound, I'm the owner of the sound right now. My daughter, them decide to take it over and run the business part of it of Avi, Scorpion, Juvenile, Silver Fox, Fridge, when he's available to do, you know what I mean, alongside us, and various other people, you know what I mean. Not leaving out Master Bucky, him don't come around, but him say him is in the camp and so forth, you know what I mean. I try to build them up in a way that to say right now, I can go to Jamaica for all six months, you know, but to make sure you run this on, because you know, if I music you know, want, I will crawl on my belly, if you get that, you know, mm -hmm. until my life end, I do make a little fool fool sound come beat me up, you know. <coughs> if they go beat me up, I must select them fault, which I've told them out there this evening before you arrive. I don't follow people. Because I'm not a follower, I'm a leader. And if I say it's so, it's so. You have to directly prove it to me, say no. Yeah. And that's all. You have to go that way. Yeah. Sounds, but, oh, sorry, sorry to cut you. Enough little monkey tune me here, they play with a road there, and I say, well then, 
No, that is not my... I may believe in entertainment mm -hmm. as a form of enjoyment. Yeah. And that's not the day. Mm -hmm. So may I try to school my crew for so well then. Mm -hmm. Entertainment is a form of enjoyment. Whether you're old or you're young, you know. May I play for you and you know, move your foot. Even if you sit down and tap your foot, so I say, yes, you dance. You can't stand up, but you tap your foot. Mm -hmm. And with the new sounds that are out there right now, there's, there's, there's crazy sounds all over the world now. Japan, Germany, Switzerland. I was watching a, a, a YouTube thing with one sound from India. It's, it's crazy out there right now. Who are you looking at and, and saying, I've got to give them a little respect still. Like, you know what I mean? There's, there's thousand sounds. Or should I say, what the question I was going to ask actually really was, are you still listening to what's present out now, like the present clashes them with what's going on, like i.e. The, the rumbles them and the, the world clash them? Are you still familiar with that? And, and what's, what's, what's your thoughts on how it is and how it's changed from when Tubbies was in there representing? Uh, what's, what's, your, what's your whole take on sound system culture and the, and the class scene as it is now? Well, it hasn't changed from Tubbies was in, because Tubbies is still in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the point that I'm trying to make, there's a lot of things Sometimes some guy come and ask if come clash on a thing, but really, I don't want to use this word, but I have to. It doesn't matter whether a man have 20 bucks or whatever. You still have to play with a man to make it, you know what I mean? But through me see her go on, sometimes I sort of distance myself out of it. I want to play in a clash where people respect music yeah. and know music. When I was a young boy in Jamaica, they used to go to some dance, some little mediocre tune, me hear them a play. You play them there as free piece, man. Make people just for no say you sound about. But in a real dance, you know, play them. Yeah. And them they are rubbish. Enough artists out there, vice tune and a vice rubbish, really, and I try to fool the people. Mm -hmm. And I bully you if you say, well, then take this car hit. It's not a hit. I miss that. And then for you realize that and know that star. Mind you, me here, John, that might be a little bit of a... <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, I'm a fan. I want to say more, but I, can't. I don't want to say... Well, the, the, the microphone is open and the big man is talking, so that's why I'm kind of like kicking back, <sighs> taking in everything that you're saying, and I'm sure people from around the world... And when you're talking, you're not really and... talking of reggae. I'm going to tell you the truth. Okay. Me mm. in a Brixton, from me come to England, a Brixton here and me living now. Mm. Oh, me see all black youth fight and kill each other. Mm -hmm. That never go on. A policeman stop all the black youth down the road in my time. You think me a pass, go away till me know I go on. Mm. No, we just walk past like it's nothing. Mm -hmm. What our parents and grandparents come here and fight for, we throw it away. Mm. And that is one of the problems. Because... Reggae music come from Blue Spot Gram where the whole of we it come here as a youngster. Never used to, when me come here on the reggae music, me here on radio, my boy Lollipop with me in the small, you know. Mm -hmm. 1963. No man can't tell me nothing. The like key theater come talk to me. Mm. When, listen to them, make them talk. But me just walk them out, man. Yeah. Final wrap up, because we're going to talk to the rest of the team. Um, advice as a big man in the business i mean how many years we're talking now 40 for nearly 50 years like <laughs> mad long in it and i can't do the maths right about now but it's been long there are young sounds out now some will probably be ignorant to the say the fact that they've never heard of king tobies but there's someone going to be sitting down who damn well know who cecil is and they know the levels um to them and to anybody that's coming up right now what kind of advice would you give them to make sure they can survive and have a long-lasting career such as yourself? Well, right now, if they never hear of King Tubbies, tell them, just mention that them household and their mother and them father will tell them. Right? Mm. The next track is, you have to play respectable music. There's a certain amount of reggae music that has been in the house party and the basement and all that where we come from. But right now, certain things where me hear the youth, they might talk, even on the microphone. No. Mm -hmm. When we are clashing, 
Me and your mother is not clashing. So do not mention no one's mother. A little boy in Jamaica, if you tell me about my mother, I take a stone and bust your head. I mm. don't use no gun coming in, no about gun. I'm a machete and chop it on your foot. <laughs> do not mention that. That is disrespectful. Anything else can go up to a reason. I know what I'm saying in front of people. Remember your elders. If you want, when I first start my son, I have all my girlfriend, father, come and dance, come listen to me play. Mm. You don't have that now. So the, the whole thing is just be respectful. Respectful. Respect the music. And respect the people around you. How do you feel about the DJs them, who are just walking into the dance? Laptop, controller. <laughs> Whoa, I saw like a dead and all these things. And you, you as a man, has been in it for a long time. How do you see them? Um, can, 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 and not, I'm not going to knock them, but at the same time, I can only ask the bigger man them to answer these questions now because I've been going around and around asking these questions. It's always been a debate, but it's never been a debate when we've got the likes of Cecil from King Top, which they give his version. Um, in the days of technology now, technology is moving. There's lack of venues, etc., etc. So... Is it feasible for a man to have a laptop, a controller, invest in dub plates but not invest in a sound system in terms of equipment and calling himself a sound? Without speaker box, amplifier and turntable is yeah. not a sound. Okay. What are you? And he's just a little DJ that walk around and if a man gear a play on him sound, you know see it. With me, I look at it and say, because most of the youth them run my son, so well then, no, don't say that. Mm. Some man I walk around and all I drive them car up the road and have whole heap of record and come in here, people dance. You don't book for play there. And you come talk about you want to play. All right? A man allow you and give you a play. You say you are the greatest this and you're greatest that and you don't have a sound for yourself. I beg you, beg you play. <laughs> so I idiot, man. <laughs> Don't make so, yourself a fool. Let's play advocate. I'm not we need really to uh, use the word devil in about let's let's use that turn it around. Now 2020 is coming in. You're young. Would you Cecil buy a sound? Would you invest in the considering the cost of sound system dub plates right now? Is that something that you would if you was going to come out and play sound, you say, yo, I'm still going to invest and buy box, buy wires, buy amps, mids, top ends, etc., etc. Would you do that in 19, 2019 going into 2020? No, well, if you love sound? the thing, you, if you love the thing, mm. you do it. If you don't love it, you don't do it. Mm. And to be really honest, most of the youth them on the street now, you have to be working to have a sound system and maintain a sound system. Don't make, make no man fool you about come out, come build some. Where you go and build, get money for build some. But at the same time, when a man allow you to play on them things, you should respect him and respect him things. Nothing in the carnival coming up. You know how much man I have to come play for my sound. Mm -hmm. When they take up the laptop, they walk down through the crowd and left me on my box and something. Make them go away from me, then I play for my sound. And now I play yeah, for my son, star. Go ahead. So if anybody's listening prior to this carnival, <laughs> <laughs> breeze past Tubby's, all right? Uh, get yourself a patty and uh, keep No, moving. no, but it's the truth. <laughs> it's true, it's true. I hear what you're saying still. I hear what you're saying. Them don't even uh, uh, say, well, then, father, they want me to take down a box, eh? Mm. Them take up them laptop and go on and walk through the court and say, you know, yeah, me mash up the dance up there, so. Go away from me, man. Yeah. Mash up what? And you're not playing a tune when I can't play. Mm. So me have you there for? No, yeah. star. Well, what can we say? We could go on and on and on. The rest of the team is inside the building. Uh, Cecil, King Tobby's <laughs> originator. <laughs> Who went in? Some great content was there for the people, them. Uh, for all your fans, them, and everybody that's been supporting T King Tobby's over the years, them. Final words, I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to hand it over to you. Well... 
As I say, crowd of people, don't worry yourself, you know. King Tubbies is still around, you know, see it. Whole but and shaky, but still. Because I have to play the music in my garage to make sure and hear if the amplifier them up, click right on that. You know, see it. I set up everything. The man thinks, well, then, is that's a one day thing. I run out. No. King Tub is for real. Every time. 2019 and going on. Bless.